tell us why you're here today? We're here to protest against the, the climate injustice um, and to hopefully make people aware that we are not happy about what, what they are negotiating um, and we want them to come to a, a solution and to some sort of binding agreement. And why did, you, why did you start to care about this issue? What made you motivated? Um, I think it was probably just seeing how multi-corporations are the ones sponsoring these climate negotiations. I think that made us quite concerned. Um, and I don't know, it's just it's so important. I don't know how anyone can not care. <laughs> and what's the energy like on the streets today? Are you feeling positive about it? It's fantastic. Everyone is so enthusiastic and ready to join in the protests and it's really exciting here. <laughs> and there's such a range of people as well. I think it's brilliant. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Yeah. <laughs> what's, brought, what's brought you here today to this march? I'm, I'm part of the Southern African Faith Communities Environment Institute, uh, which is multi-faith with a deep concern for the environment and I'm here as its operations manager to express concern about uh, the damage that's been done to the world, the way it's been treated as a commodity uh, rather than as, as God's creation, as something sacred. And why are you worrying? Why am I worried? Yeah, what makes you worry? What, what do you see around you? Well, you I mean, we're experiencing tremendous climate change, extreme weather patterns where they shouldn't be happening. We're seeing increasing desertification, um, and, and just the evidence of pollution and damage is all around. It's quite clear that we have neglected our prime, um, our, our prime responsibility, our first responsibility that God has given us, and we've seriously neglected it, and, and we're guilty. And how are you seeing the impacts of climate change and pollution in Africa? Um, for Zambia, just as we were coming down with the youth caravan all the way from Nairobi, we noticed as we were speaking from pe with the people, they do not understand what's happening, but they're suffering the effects. We're seeing people in Africa depend on agriculture, but we're seeing they're no longer able to farm because they do not know when the rain season is coming. So it's making life very difficult. People's incomes are reducing to more than half. So it is, we are seeing the impacts and the effects of climate change. And can you tell us, what was this caravan that you came, that you arrived in South Africa in? Uh, this is a We Have Faith youth caravan that came all the way from Kenya, Nairobi to Durban, South Africa with countries uh, such as Zambia, Tanzania, Botswana, Kenya itself and Malawi participating in it and many more, others from such as Norway we had to go from someone from Denmark and from Canada. So it's comprised of different youth coming together for a common cause. And you said that you saw the impacts of climate change on this journey. What would you say to people living in rich countries who don't believe in climate change? I would tell them that every time they use something in a selfish way, people here are suffering the impact. It's like they're taking it away from the person here. So I, I would say that people are starving. If they, don't, if they do not believe it, we are suffering the effects here. We are starving. We are having people who cannot go to school anymore because they just can't afford it. So please take care of whatever resources we have on this earth. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you. Keith, we spoke to you inside the centre yesterday. Uh, the vibe seems a little bit different. What do you think people are calling for out here? Well, people are calling for their voices to be heard, and that's right. I mean, this is about giving the power and the voice for the people who care and making that heard inside the negotiating halls. And do you think this kind of protest will have an impact? I, I think it has to. People can't ignore the voices of the, the people from all around the world on this session any longer. This is all about actually listening to what the people are saying, listening to what the scientists are saying, listening to what even progressive companies are saying, and getting on and acting on it. And then, yeah, this is great. Here is real, real energy, real people calling for change. Uh -huh. And as a veteran of these talks and a veteran of these kinds of protests, what would you describe the energy as out here? I think the energy in this, this, uh, this march is brilliant. As a personal level, I've wanted to come on a march in South Africa since I was in, involved in anti-apartheid work. This is fantastic. These people know how to, how to give a good march and give a strong voice. And it's a privilege to be here. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you. Juliana, you've spent the last week inside the conference centre. What's it like to be out here? It's really good because here we feel the heat of the people. Inside there, it's only 
men basically wearing dark suits and in that conference center with bad food and not energy at all and here we can feel lots of energy mainly because of the African people that they can mobilize people with their songs so it's really energizing for the next week of the talks. And what are the messages that you're hearing today? Uh, climate justice, I'm here with 350.org that we demand that the leaders from the whole world have an agreement that listens to the science and to justice. So basically that's it. I think every, there are lots of me, me, uh, messages but uh, everybody's uh, calling for justice. Thank you very much, Joanna. We've just been admiring your sense of dress. Uh, can we ask why you're here today? Sure, we're here because we want the people inside COP17 to stop clowning around and make a just commitment and a fair commitment to reducing carbon emissions. And do you sense that that is happening already? No, no. we don't think so. <laughs> why do you think that we haven't made more progress in tackling climate change? Um, because developed countries are not taking enough responsibility for the emissions that they've already put in the air. And because we're putting profit before the sanctity of the earth that we live in. And standing here in the middle of this march, what would you say to people living in rich countries who don't believe in climate change? Um, that they're definitely having an impact on um, the planet and it's really important for people who have high carbon footprints to make reductions because people in poorer countries just can't make that, there's no reduction to make. And are you optimistic about the outcome of these negotiations and about the outcome of this struggle? Sadly not. No. <laughs> We'd love to be more optimistic and we're here to make our voices heard. But the system that we live in at the moment puts money puts money first.